the American Medical Association, or AMA, voted on June 18th that obesity should be classified as a disease. Now, this is a change that could affect the care, diagnosis, and treatment of more than 78 million adults and 12 million children who are currently considered obese. According to the CDC, about 24% of adults in New Jersey are obese, along with 17% of children ages 2 through 5. Joining us in the studio from Atlantic Health's Overlook Medical Center are Dr. Ken Storch, medical director of their Metabolic Weight and Wellness Center, and Richard Horn, who's a patient uh, who used, uh, used to weigh, by the way, about 300 pounds. And we had this discussion before, and because I had gone up and down with weight, I applaud you, you. Uh, for not only losing that weight, but keeping it off for about three years now, you Yes, said? that's right. Fantastic. Good for you. Congratulations. You. First of all, how did uh, your patient have the success? Well, uh, Richard uh, is a motivated guy, and uh, <laughs> not everybody comes in motivated, so it, he was ready to take action. Uh, but as he may tell you, uh, he wasn't able to accomplish the whole uh, deal by himself. And, you know, I did the appropriate medical kind of intake and got to know him a little bit better and examined him, uh, went over things like his family history, and we decided together uh, to go with medications to assist with the weight loss. And to make a long story short, uh, Richard was able to accomplish a weight loss that you might only see uh, in bariatric surgery in some cases. Uh, and, and in his case, to his credit, he's been so motivated and has done such a good job with diet and with exercise that he's now off the medicine and maintaining his weight loss. For, th for three years, yeah. maintaining that amount of weight loss, about 25%, right? which is enormous. And, and in fact, I know some people who've had... Uh, some of the surgeries who have not sure. had that kind of success. That's fantastic. Yeah. Tell us how you feel. I feel great. Um, it was a, a wonderful journey. Uh, I was under Dr. Sorge's care for about four years. And uh, through that time, different uh, medications, was able to lose about 88 uh, pounds. And I've kept it off since then. Since doing so, I felt really enabled to um, try things I wasn't able to do in the past. So now I do triathlons around the country, uh, 5K, 10K races all over, things I wouldn't have done before I met Dr. Storch. What was the difference this time out versus the other times you tried to lose weight? The other times I just felt um, hard to start, uh, really hard to start. Uh, the medication sort of gives you the initial uh, weight loss that you need to feel empowered to continue. And once, you, once I started it, it was pretty hard to stop. How many times would you say you've tried in the past? Uh, I met after storage when I was about uh, 18, 19 years old. Um, so not too many times, about one or two times before and it was, uh, it was a failure. Okay. And what do you see, doctor, when, when you have people come into your office, is there a typical person who needs to lose weight with the same typical background or do you see all sorts of different backgrounds and all sorts of different challenges? Well, we see all sorts of different backgrounds and in Richard's case, uh, there is some family history of obesity. Uh, probably there is a genetic component to it and we knew he was going to be battling that for a while. Uh, in many cases, we'll just go with a lifestyle program, you know, which might include just the fitness piece and the nutrition and, and the psychology. Um, and in his case, he was at a level of, of overweight that really begged for more aggressive treatment. We call it stepped care up into the medication range. And of course, people with more obesity, higher levels who might have a, even a harder time and not respond to medications, uh, that is, is bariatric surgery, which is... Yeah. But that was the next question. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of people, uh, the immediate thought is, why not bariatric surgery? So why not bariatric surgery? Well, I don't think most people wake up in the morning saying, gee, I want an operation today. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a big commitment. Uh, it's a permanent change for most people. And uh, the complication rates are very low, but they're not zero. Uh, so I think it's pretty self-evident that if you can get by and get good results without surgery, it's worth doing. But then again, people who are in the higher weight categories generally don't do well without the surgery. So there's a stratification process. And to some extent, it's trial and error. Generally, when somebody comes in, if, like Richard, who hasn't really had a lot of goes at weight loss, we're not going to jump right into surgery uh, under any normal circumstance. But somebody who is very overweight and has had one failure after another, and they're starting to get into a state where their, their health might be at permanent risk, then yeah, sure, you want to jump in. Richard, tell us what your, your normal day was before weight loss. What would you normally eat? When would you get up? How would your day progress? <laughs> uh, before Dr. Storch, it was, uh, I, was in, I was in high school and just starting out in college. So great time for a lot of bad habits to start. <laughs> Um, you know, a lot of, uh, lot of time to myself where I could just eat whatever I wanted. 
uh, you know, before class, um, have kind of whatever breakfast I needed as I was getting ready to go, jump out the door. And when I came home, pretty, pretty unstructured and um, uh, a lot of opportunities for uh, bad habits and bad practices to take place. So the kind of food you would eat, a lot of fast food? Yeah, a lot of fast food, um, a lot of carbs. Um, didn't have too much education about vegetables or, or what, what compromised a proper meal. So with Dr. Storch, uh, I kind of was starting fresh and really uh, did a lot of time learning about what I should do. And now would you say you're, I mean, you're, you're pretty regimented in terms of when you wake I up, am. working out, and food you eat? That's right, yeah. Pretty regimented, uh, standard for me, uh, something like cereal and fruit in the morning. And uh, my meal times are, are much more consistent than they used to be. That's key. Uh, having a plan, I think, is one of the best things to do. Um, eliminating options um, is helpful when there's a lot of when there's a lot of gray area in your day. You tend to fill it up with things that shouldn't be there. Doctor, the uh, this uh, obesity has now been classified as a disease, or at least there's there's a discussion that's making it so. Right. Um, in doing so, a lot of people jump in right away and applaud that and say that's a wonderful thing. But I've also heard the antithesis of that. People saying that. When the government declares something a disease, that means that lets them step in and they make the decisions and sort of regulate and sometimes take the decision-making process away from the individual doctors. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I think it, it was something that was, the time had come. Uh, the AMA resolution to recognize obesity as a disease actually follows a lot of other organizations. Uh, the World Health Organization has recognized it. The NIH has recognized it. Even the Internal Revenue Service has recognized it by right. this time. Um, and the, um, it's important uh, to, I'm sorry, well, look, that. You, un no, you understand that, in other words, that, that when, when it, it, no, one, no one suggests that being overweight, being obese is good for you, per mm -hmm. se. But once the government officially says this is now classified as X, Y, or Z, and then that opens the doors for the government to then say, and here's the protocol, and you must follow this. Do you understand the point? Sure. The, the government doesn't really take that, that level of, of putting a protocol together. But I, I'd use the analogy, look at yeah. the lung Remember, cancer. Remember, we have, we have a new, a new health care plan. Uh -huh. That's the yeah. point. And yeah. might it under under a new health care plan? That's that's the question. Well, I think they work together with with, with you know, medical societies, but to to not recognize obesity as disease, I think would be, um, you know, you'd say you might be saying, well, obesity is just a consequence of not exercising enough and uh, and uh, eating poorly. But uh, an analogy to that would be. Uh, somebody had lung cancer, you'd say, well, you don't have a disease because it was actually caused by the cigarette. So it's not a disease. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. This, this, obesity is a condition that causes great harm to many people in the country, a huge number of people. Uh, hundreds of billions of dollars are being spent on conditions that are being driven by obesity. You know, mm -hmm. people, patients are being treated for high blood pressure, for diabetes, for sleep apnea, uh, cancer, cardiovascular disease. And to, to ignore that uh, obesity is the root cause of all those problems, and you could be uh, addressing all those problems by treating obesity would be a huge mistake. And it continues to grow, sadly. Yes. All yeah. right, doctor. Thank you so much. Richard, congratulations Thank again. Thank you so much. Continued success. Thanks for having me. We're going to be right back with how the new law on tanning on teens <laughs> takes effect, and that uh, will be taking effect in New Jersey. Stay with us.